I bet you woke up this morning thinking, today I'm gonna do my garage door repair. I'm gonna become a garage door expert. By golly, I'm gonna search YouTube and find as many shaky, dimly lit videos with bad audio held by some old geezer holding an iPhone and he's gonna show me how he did that repair the very first time he ever tried it and he's an expert now and he's gonna show me how. Well, I guess I'm your geezer today and I've been doing garage doors for about 15 years and today, no matter what your repair is, no matter what your need is, I'm gonna go over four things you need to know about your garage door, four dangers that you need to be aware of and if you stay tuned, I'm gonna hit you with the four things. Hi, my name's Travis with Parts for Garage Doors. Our YouTube channel is gonna have tons of do-it-yourself information on it. It's gonna have tons of tips from actual technicians out in the field. Um, you can always go on on the description and see a link to our parts store. We do have an e-commerce store online where you can order all the common garage door parts. Uh, most of all, we just wanted to introduce ourselves to you and let you know that if you subscribe to our channel, we have a lot of content we're gonna be providing for you guys. If you watch this video to the very end, you're gonna find a tip on how to replace your bottom roller safely. And so without further ado, here's four things you need to watch out for when working on garage doors. 28, 29, 30. An average garage door is gonna take 30 quarter turns if it's seven feet tall. That's seven full turns plus two quarter turns. So this is your first danger, the first thing to be careful of, the torsion spring. Most people know the torsion spring can be super dangerous. It's because there's a lot of energy stored in the spring. You don't want to ever take your wrench and just start loosening the spring. If you do that, it's gonna unwind and release all of that power, release all of that torque in an instant, and it's gonna break your knuckles, skid your knuckles, throw the wrench at you. Not gonna be good. That's the first thing you need to be careful of when it comes to the torsion spring. So let's talk about what the torsion system consists of. Essentially, it is a lift system. You have your torsion spring. Sometimes there's one spring on the door, sometimes there's two springs. You have your torsion rod or your torsion tube that goes all the way across. And typically for a residential door, it's gonna be a hollow tube. The tube is suspended or held in place by three bearing plates. Your right side bearing plate, your center bearing plate, which is where the springs are bolted to. And then on the other side is your left side bearing plate. Just in front of the bearing plates, you have your uh, cable drum. And your drum is where the cable reels into. For most residential doors, it's a 12 inch circumference. So every full turn of this cable drum is gonna lift the door 12 inches, one foot. The cables go down and they connect to the bottom of the door. So essentially your door is suspended by the cables. The job of the lift system, the job of the torsion spring is to counterbalance the weight of the door. If you put too many turns on your spring, your door is going to want to lift up because there's too much energy, there's too much lifting power and it's automatically going to lift up. If you don't have enough turns on your spring, then the door is going to be really heavy. And then as you lift it to the opening height, it'll automatically want to drop down. So if you've ever seen a garage door, that when you lift that garage door up, it wants to creep down four inches, it wants to creep down six inches, and it will never hold itself up. That means that the maximum 29 or 30 quarter turns was never put on that spring. And one or two quarter turns should be added. 
whenever adding tension to a torsion spring, always, add, always put your vice grip. We use the vice grip with the curved mouth here and that fits really nicely in the torsion tube. Always put it on the top side, against the wall, against a stud. Your wall is going to be more straight up and down. What the vice grip does is it helps hold the cables in place while you're adjusting the spring. Another thing you should never do is use improper tools to wind your spring. So when there's a lot of torque on the spring, you don't want to be holding a screwdriver. For one, you're looking for a tool with an outside diameter, outer diameter of half inch. Most screwdrivers are going to be way too small and you might think that you can hold it, but at a certain angle, it's going to want to slip and at a certain amount of torque, it's not going to hold. So people have been known to use crazy things. Don't use a fountain pen. Don't use a screwdriver. Don't use your extension set. Get a true half inch OD torsion rod or a winding bar. Get the right tools and do it the right way and you'll stay safe. Okay, quick review. Never unwind these screws unless you're holding a winding bar in place first. Then you can unwind it. Also, never take these bolts out unless both springs are unwound. A lot of first timers who are, you know, DIYers who are trying to replace their own garage door spring, if they have two springs, one of them's broken and one of them's not broken, they think that they can take these bolts out and maybe, maybe remove one of the springs first. But no, first you have to unwind the non-broken spring and then that way you can safely take these bolts out. The other thing you should be aware of is that this cable drum, there's two set screws on these cable drums. If you loosen those, all of the energy that was on this cable is now gonna go onto the other side. It's gonna lift the door up and make it go crooked. So you don't wanna do that either. The last thing I wanna to bring to your attention is this bottom plate on either side. This bottom plate holds the cable in place. So the cable is attached to the bottom, the bottom plate. And so do not take your wrench or your drill and simply start loosening that. W once you take that last screw off, boom, it's gonna go up on you real super fast. So this is a big mistake that a lot of uh, do-it-yourselfers uh, do when they're trying to replace their rollers. And so they're trying to put a new roller in here and they wanna remove the screws. I've got a really easy and simple trick for you. I'm gonna go over it with you right now. Okay, so now we're gonna replace one of the rollers really quickly, really easily. Um, you're gonna take a pair of channel locks and you're gonna go about waist high, a little bit higher than waist high, and put a slight bend in the track. And what you're gonna do is bring the roller down to that position it's gonna pop right out of the track right there. You can just pop the old one out, pop the new one back in, and once the new one is in, you can put it back in place, and the roller's back in. So that's what you do for both the bottom rollers on both sides. I'm gonna become a garage door repair expert. I bet you woke up this morning thinking, today I'm gonna do my garage door. <laughs> today I'm gonna become a garage door expert. I'm gonna go on the YouTube for dangers that you that your garage door. So you don't ever wanna overwind a spring. But my point is that, so you can maybe, could, so let's talk about what your, what the torsion seam. Another thing never, never, ever should you do. That didn't sound right. So when you remove this plate and you take that last screw out, it's gonna wanna come up at you really fast, just like that. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you enjoyed the content, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you'll be notified when more videos come out. We will see you next time.